Hello everyone, this is Ambarish and you are watching EduShark. When we are going for an interview or to meet someone special, what is the first thing that comes in our mind? First impression is the last impression. Well, this does not apply only in interviews, but it applies in academic writing too. Yes, your introduction is your first impression. And if you have not made it best impression, then the reader is not going to read your article. How will you make this impression a best impression? In order to understand this, you will have to go deeper into it and understand each and every aspect of writing introduction paragraph. In this video today, we are going to discuss the same. First of all, we shall discuss about why introduction is needed. Basically, we'll talk about the logic behind introduction. After that, we shall talk about the different steps that are required in order to write a good introduction paragraph. We shall also understand this with the help of some real examples of good introduction. And in the end, I will also provide you four important tips which will help you in writing your introduction paragraph in a better manner. So let's understand this. So guys, let us first understand the logic behind introduction means why basically introduction is needed. You have to answer two important questions here. First one is why and second one is how. When you answer why, you basically explain the importance of your academic article. Let me explain this. See, whenever an article is assigned to us, a topic is given to us to write an article, you must note that there is already a research done on that particular topic means that there is a knowledge already available on that particular topic but that knowledge is not sufficient there is a gap between the knowledge that is available and the knowledge that is required and why you are writing this article because you want to fill that gap so basically you are answering why this article is needed next is how means what will be your approach how are you going to fill that gap means whether you will do a primary research you will do a secondary research you will do some survey you are going to do some literature review or what this would be your approach so basically when you answer how you are going to tell the reader about your approach of writing the article so this is the basic overall logic behind writing introduction Now, since we have understood what is introduction and why it is needed, let us understand how to write a good introduction in four important steps. Step number one, write a hook statement. Hook statement is very important for your introduction paragraph. It is normally one simple sentence, but it has the ability to attract the reader for your entire article. Therefore, you should spend some good time to decide a good hook statement. It should be clear concise and not very long and it should have some catchy elements so that it can attract the attention of the reader for the article. In a hook statement, you can ask a question. You can present some data or facts or figures from a different perspective. You can also give a quotation. Once your hook statement is done, then comes the step two means provide the background information. Now, what is a background information? See you first read the topic clearly understand it in detail and try to find out the important key terms from the topic and then explain those key terms while ensuring that you are going in the direction of your main argument most of the time your topic has a subtopic too you should ensure that you have, you are talking about your subtopic too in few lines while giving the background information in introduction paragraph you should also ensure that you are not explaining it in detail. You can keep the evidence and detailed explanation for your main body of the paper. Overall, while giving the background information, you basically set the tone of your academic article and you also give a sense of the information that the reader is going to get in the main body of the paper. Step 3. Write the thesis statement. After background information, you provide your thesis statement, which is basically your main argument. A thesis statement is clear and concise in nature and it tells the position that you are taking on the given topic. 
इट इज़ नॉट नेसेसरी दैट यू राइट द थेसिस स्टेटमेंट इन वन सेंटेंस ओनली इफ रिक्वायर्ड यू कैन राइट मोर देन वन सेंटेंस एज वेल बट नॉट वेरी डिस्क्रिप्टिव See the introduction paragraph is written with the flow of information that goes like an upside down triangle where you first give some general information like like your hook statement or your background information and after that you make it a little specific which is your thesis statement step number 4 write the paper structure normally students avoid writing about the paper structure in their introduction paragraph however it is important because it gives the reader a direction in which you are going to prove your point the direction in which you are going to prove your thesis statement and it also gives some information to the reader that in which part of your article what information he is going to get structure of the paper is written in the end of the introduction paragraph and it is normally in one or two lines it is just like the kind of information i gave you during the beginning of my video that is what all things i am going to cover in this video similarly you write what all things you are going to cover in your article in the introduction paragraph in one or two lines that is what we call as structure of the paper so guys once step 4 is done you have written about the structure of the paper your introduction paragraph is ready now should you consider it a perfect introduction paragraph no you should review it proofread it and if you find some kind of amendments are required you should make those amendments as well let us understand a good introduction paragraph with the help of these examples so guys in order to explain the introduction paragraph i have taken these three important journal articles in which Uh, we shall be looking how the authors have presented their introduction paragraph so you can see this is a journal named tourism management and uh, this one is another journal international journal of environmental research and public health and uh, this one is again from the same journal tourism management so this these journals are high quality journals and obviously if any paper is published in these journals you can understand that the papers are also of high quality so let us see how the introduction of these quality journals papers are written so in this article you can see that the topic is does good governance attract tourists so it's a case study and it's a very simple topic what are the key terms that we can take from this topic so obviously the key term is good governance one thing attracting tourists is another key term and one thing that we can make a sense out of this topic is that is there any relationship between good governance and tourism management so let us see how the writers have presented their introduction paragraph we will analyze this introduction paragraph on the parameters that we discussed earlier the parameters are first that whether the writers have answered the two important questions why they are writing this article and how they are going to write this article so this why and how if they have answered this or not and then the important ingredients like hook statement background information the research question is there or not thesis statement is mentioned or not and then if they have mentioned the paper structure or not so if we look at this introduction paragraph here you see that they are trying to present some generic information if you read this good governance is needed to assure property right security contract enforcement and collective action as discussed by khan 2007 the positive impact of good governance arises mainly from two sources first it reduces transaction costs and so on and then second good governance allows markets to overcome entrenched market failures in allocating assets and so on so here basically the writer is trying to give some background information about what is good governance so basically the way we uh, took the key term as good governance the writer is trying to explain what is good governance okay if you uh, read this statement thus it seems that good governance impacts both market and non market activities so here background information is given now if you look at this paragraph here the writers are explaining uh, about the research questions that they are going to answer like here they are mentioning is the governance quality of an economy crucial to the attractiveness of tourism in addition if yes how so basically they are going to answer these questions in their paper so it is the research question that they have mentioned in their introduction paragraph 
now if we go in the next paragraphs we again background information is given related to tourism and good governance is there any relationship between them or not here you can see although some links seems straightforward no bridge exists between the literature on governance and that on tourism so here the writer is trying to say that yes there is a relationship but there is no enough information available so basically they are trying to explain the importance why they are going to write this paper why this paper is important they are answering with this that the information is available but it is not enough so there is a gap between the information available and the required information and with the help of this paper they are going to fill that gap now why is answered let us see how it is answered or not so if you look at this uh, section in the same paragraph here so here they are mentioning that to this end a dynamic panel data approach is preferred using data of 100 countries over 2002 to 2012 our variables of interest are the worldwide governance indicators so they have taken some data for 100 countries for a period of 2002 to 2012 that is 10 years so they are also answering how they are going to answer it so why is answered how is answered background information is given and they in the end they are also giving the paper structure see they are very clearly mentioning that in section 2 we describe the background underlying this, this study then the data and empirical approach are discussed in section 3 and in section 4 presents the results so the paper structure is also given so guys as i told you in the previous section of the video that the introduction paragraph is written in a format of upside down triangle where initially some generic information is given then some background information is given related to the key terms and then the specific information is given related to the research questions or the or the thesis st statement then in the end it is also mentioned the paper structure so you can see that all the required elements of a good introduction is presented in this introduction paragraph similarly let us see the second uh, article and let us see if that article is doing the same or not so this one is the second article the topic is employee engagement and well being in times of covid 19 a proposal of the 5 c's model now what are the key terms we can take from this topic first key term is employee engagement or we can say that well being of the employees second key term is during pandemic what is the situation of employee engagement what is the situation of employee satisfaction and they are going to propose a model of 5c so we have different key terms related to employee engagement employee satisfaction covid 19 how covid 19 is impacting employee satisfaction and dissatisfaction and all so let us see with the help of these key terms whether the writers have included the answers of why and how or not if we look at this introduction paragraph you can see that here they are mentioning that according to there are radical changes occurring in the work and social environment such as shifting to remote work and applying new workplace policies and procedures to limit contact all this has led to consequences for workers such as difficulties in disconnecting from work demands separating work and private life and even other psychological risks such as isolation so you can see that the writers are presenting a hook statement they are trying to say that the way after pandemic the organizations are trying to present uh, implement new policies it is impacting the private and professional life of the employees so they have presented a hook statement now if you go further you will see that the background information is given uh, about about the work life balance and all stressful situation you can see all this is mentioned existing management research offers insights of strategies for managing human resources in these crises such as putting people first attending to team work and communication and all all these measures are aimed not only at improving well being but also at recovering and improving the company's performance so basically they are saying that there is a lot of research done on this particular topic but that research is not enough that is why they are going to present some other aspects of these topics so that the employers can take better decisions if you look all these paragraphs 
all these paragraphs are about background information employee employee engagement is a positive fulfilling work related state of mind that is characterized by vigor dedication and absorption so this is basically background information now if you come down and you see here that they are now going to answer why this paper is written as i already told you that with the help of background information they are trying to say that the research is done but the research is not enough see aside from recent studies little is known about how to address engagement to achieve well-being in the current pandemic environment so what they are saying that the information that is already present about handling the pandemic environment is not enough and with the help of this paper they are going to present that information so they are basically answering why this paper is needed now if you come down you will see the research questions are also mentioned what are the main factors influencing employee engagement why are these factors relevant how can firm address these factors so research questions are there so basically they are, they are now narrowing down the information in their introduction paragraph then if you go down you see that they are now answering how they are going to address these questions so why and how both is answered a literature review has been developed to identify better understanding so how is also answered and in the end you will see that they have again presented the structure of the paper the article is organized as follows the first section develops the theoretical underpinnings of the factors influencing employee engagement the second section presents the results obtained and analyzed the third section addresses the results obtained and analyzed so basically they have presented the paper structure as well so now you see that they have answered why they have answered how they have presented the research questions they have presented the hook statement they have presented the background information and they have presented the paper structure as well so this is how a good introduction is written now let us look at this paper so this paper again is about luxury shopping abroad what do chinese tourists look for so from this topic again we we can have some key terms like luxury shopping in uh, foreign countries and this is done for, uh, this research is mainly based on chinese tourists so it's simple that there, there is a behavior of shopping of chinese tourists whether that uh, buying behavior has got changed or not this is the main topic of the paper now let us have a look at the introduction paragraph so if you look at this introduction paragraph you can see that here they are mentioning according to the ministry of culture and tourism 149.7 million chinese tourists tourists traveled overseas in 2018 a 14.7 percent increase over 2017 so what they are doing they are giving a data which means they are trying to hook you it is a hook statement that there is an increase in the tourism of chinese tourists and whether this increase is impacting the shopping behavior of the chinese tourists or not that they will discuss later on so th this is a kind of hook statement that they have presented now if you go here and you see in the in the second paragraph they are giving the background information here also they are giving the background information chinese tourists spend most of their money on shopping so they are giving some other data like they are trying to give the uh, information about the behavior of chinese uh, tourists so here again they are giving some information background information chinese studies have shown that chinese consumers express great intentions to in engage in luxury shopping driven by factors such as brand consciousness social comparison and innovative fashion and all so again it's background information now if you come here and you see in this paragraph they are answering chinese outbound tourism and luxury shopping continue to expand and chinese luxury shoppers have gradually become a target segment for many overseas tourism destination even so uh, little is known about these shoppers behavior when abroad now see here they have again answered why basically they are trying to give the importance of the paper that why they are writing this paper they are trying to say that the chinese tourists are changing their behavior of luxury shopping but the information available about about the behavior of chinese tourists is not enough and therefore they are going to write this paper so that the readers can have enough information about the behavior of chinese tourists so here they have answered why this paper is needed basically they have informed the importance of this paper 
in this paragraph okay now they are also trying to inform you about what all things are there in this paper this study attempts to investigate chinese luxury shoppers preferences for shopping destination relevant attributes and all so now they are trying to become a little specific and they are saying that our findings offer important implications for marketers in luxury shopping destinations destinations and related sectors so they are again uh, saying the importance of the paper now if you look at this introduction paragraph you will find that there is a difference between the previous two paragraphs that we analyzed in the previous two paragraphs we were getting the information about the paper structure as well here we were getting the information about paper structure here also we were getting information about the paper structure here in the in the last uh, few lines but in this introduction the paper structure is not mentioned first thing second thing in this introduction they have not answered how they are going to investigate the behavior of chinese consumers so why answered how not answered paper structure not given so you can see that although this introduction is also a good introduction because they have given hook statement they have given background information and they have also given the importance of the paper why they are writing this paper but if they could have added these two other elements it would have been a best introduction so this is a bonus knowledge for you guys because you know that uh, at times you are also given to write a critique of a journal article so this is how you can write a critique of journal article so here you can see that in this introduction paragraph these two things are not present now i hope it is clear to you that how an introduction paragraph is written basically you have to answer two main questions why and how why the paper is written and how you are going to write the paper and while answering these two questions you will ensure that you are trying to introduce three to four main elements one is a hook statement another one is background information then the research questions or the thesis statement and finally you present the paper structure so this is how a good introduction is written guys now in the final part of the video we shall be talking about some important tips which will help you in writing best introduction paragraph but before starting the tips if you are here till now i would request you to subscribe to the channel because it keeps us motivated and it helps us in growth tip number 1 word count you should always ensure that the word count of your introduction paragraph is 10% of the total length if your lecturer has given some other word count obviously you should follow that guideline but normally lecturers also give you 10% of the total length of paper for word count so you should ensure that you utilize these 10% of the total length of the paper tip number 2 read the requirements of the assignment in detail we should always read the requirements of the assignment in detail before starting our writing part in fact we should have an outline ready with us before we start writing if we have an outline ready with us then only we can write best introduction paragraph without an outline we cannot decide our thesis statement we cannot decide a correct background information and we cannot also decide the approach of the assignment therefore you should have an outline ready with you and it can be done only if you have read the requirements in detail and you understand what all is required therefore if required you read it twice or thrice but you should have a clear understanding of the requirements of the assignment mm -hmm. tip number 3 you can write your introduction paragraph in the end yes you can write your introduction paragraph once your entire article is completed because then you know each and everything about your article you know what all information you have presented in the paper you know what is the approach that you have taken so you can present your introduction paragraph in a better way if you are writing it after completion of the paper but obviously you will place it before the main body of the paper mm -hmm. tip number 4 check the marking rubrics if you want good results from your academic papers you should always check the marking rubrics lecturers always provide marking rubrics for your academic papers in these marking rubrics lecturers give the expectations that they have from your paper from different parts of the paper and in these parts very frequently they provide the expectation from the introduction paragraph as well 
Look at this example. The lecturer will consider the introduction an excellent introduction only if it has a strong introduction of the key terms and some explanation about the subtopics as well as a strong thesis statement. So these were the four important tips of writing a best introduction paragraph. Which one you like the most? Let me know in the comment section. So guys, this was all about writing introduction paragraph. I hope you learned something new today and from now onwards, you will start seeing your introduction paragraph from a different perspective. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and share it with your colleagues and friends. If you want me to make a video on a different topic, please mention it on the comment section. If you want to share some feedback or suggestion, you can mention that as well on the comment section. I'll make sure that I take care of your suggestions. We shall meet again in the next video on a different topic. Till then, keep reading, keep writing. Thank you so much for watching.